Privit Moy Druzi. Hello, my friends. My name is Darren Gertis. I'm a professor who tries to provide context so that you can understand what's going on in Ukraine. Now, the big story right now is the drone attack that hit the Kremlin. And I'm going to show you what pro-Ukrainian YouTubers are saying about this. I'm going to kind of distill just who's on which side of how they interpret it, okay? So if you just stick with me, I'm going to go through all those and then I'll recap it. And then you can decide what you think. So the first thing is Russia is just flipping out about this. Here's the actual event itself. And we'll see one of the drones hitting and... It's not really causing any damage, but it is quite a symbolic attack on Russia. But who did the symbolic attack? Was it Ukraine? Was it false flag? Was it uh, some local partisans? We just don't know. But again, they're just flipping out. Lots of time is being spent on RT and TASS and Pravda. I'm show showing you mostly RT here, but here are the headlines. Ukrainian assassination attempt on Putin foiled. Well, it wasn't an assassination attempt. He wasn't there and everybody knew he wasn't there. Uh, Putin unhurt by drone attack. But that's this assassination thing is the uh, line that they're using. Uh, Russia warns of retaliation for Ukrainian attack on the Kremlin. Um, here's another one. West cannot stay silent on Kremlin drone attack, but won't admit anything, say the experts. Top Russian MP calls for use of weapons capable of destroying the Kyiv regime. And here's one more. Moscow accuses the West of fueling a sense of impunity in Kyiv. Okay, so those are the major headlines. The same kind of thing is in Pravda and TASS. Okay, so how do pro-Ukrainian YouTubers come down on this? Well, Georgie could barely contain his joy. Now, I understand that because I was feeling like, wow, they did that? But here's Georgie. I'll let him start with this. He's on the side that Ukraine looks like it, they did it. And this kind of makes sense, right? I mean, who's at war with Russia? Ukraine. So let's hear Georgie. If you are not aware what really happened, let me get you up to speed. Firstly, what was covered on the thumbnail of this video, which is that not just one, but two Ukraine, well, okay, let's say maybe not Ukrainian, but drones of an unidentified origin have struck <laughs> Moscow's Kremlin. Setting Kremlin on fire is a big deal because I'm pretty sure you're aware that in Moscow they've been bulking up uh, air defenses just as tight as they can and Russians really wanted to hide it like they didn't say anything right from the morning that uh, Russia was attacked and so on but the more important part here is is just how much humiliation it is for the Russian air defense and, and just and, and that's really a big thing and he said well uh, unidentified type but um, Georgie believes that it came from Ukraine okay that's fair um, and it is a humiliation for Russia so that would lend itself to the theory that it's from Ukraine okay let's go on and look at the next one so Georgie could barely contain himself here's Vlad Vexler and he's he's a little bit more um, contemplative about it. Here's who's but Before we do that, we've got to ask the basic question. Who done it? Let's start with Ukraine did it, which is the most plausible explanation until we know more. This was not... And, and I like the way that Vlad takes this. He says, look, this seems like the most plausible till we understand something else. And then he runs with this. So here's Vlad. An assassination attempt on Putin. Mr. Putin doesn't live in the Kremlin. He is not there right. at night. So this is about symbolism. Mm -hmm. This is about politics. And this sends a very powerful message, even though it practically doesn't accomplish any goals. And, if, and he's right. It does send a powerful message. And the powerful message is we can actually reach you. And that's a very, very powerful message. This wasn't Ukraine. Ukraine is perfectly capable in the future of carrying out similar operations. What Ukraine does on Russian soil, as we'll hear in a moment, will continue to diversify and escalate in 2023. Now, okay, so that's Vlad's take. It's the most likely thing is that it was Ukraine. Now, he was also talking about the attack being on Russian soil and it look, we can reach you. So reporting from Ukraine did a really good job of making this same kind of point because there are multiple drone strikes and there is in Crimea uh, and into other places in Russia. And then there was this drone strike. So let's hear what he has to say. 
However, the biggest news by far is that today Moscow was hit by two drones. And the explosions were recorded not on the outskirts, but in the heart of Moscow, Kremlin. The footage shows how a drone hits the dome and explodes. Later, Russian sent some inspectors to evaluate the damage and collect the remnants of the drone for analysis. The building did not sustain big damage and there were no casualties. Russian sources immediately declared that Ukrainians conducted an assassination attempt on Putin, while the Ukrainian side quickly responded by claiming that they are not responsible for the attack. Today another drone attack was conducted on the airfield in Bryansk. It was reported that at least one plane was damaged. If true, the goal of this drone attack may be to force Russians to relocate their fighter bombers away. Okay, now this this gives a very strong argument for Ukraine doing it. If the goal is to force them to move their fighter bombers back or to move their air defenses back, and that's what I said about the Crimea uh, attack where they hit the oil fields the other day, that's a pretty strong argument that uh, Ukraine may be behind this. Okay. Now, Dennis also talked about this, but Dennis talked about both sides. So I'm going to let him talk about both sides and hear, let's, let's hear what Dennis had to say. Well, my friends, I think that you have already heard about the drone that hit one of the buildings in the Russian capital city of Moscow, and to be more precise, in Kremlin. And the building over there carries the main flag of the Russian Federation. Before, there was the Soviet flag and it was changed for the Russian flag after Soviet Union collapse. And that moment was quite iconic for Russia and for the Soviet Union. It was live broadcasted, marking the new page in the history of the ex-Soviet countries. Unfortunately, Russia failed to develop in the democratic state. And they continue to bring suffering for their neighbors, like Ukraine. So this attack was really symbolic and we have two of the sides that could have conducted this attack, Ukraine or Russia itself. So today we're going to review both of those variants, Russian false flag operation or Ukrainian attack far behind the front lines to mark the weakness of the Russian Federation. The Russian propaganda claimed at first that they've shut down the drone just over that building but no, it was the programmed explosion over that building. So no casualties were reported, so no big damage to the building, I would say, but the huge reputation damage to the Russian Federation. It and that's exactly it. It's the symbolism. It's not actually causing anything to bad to happen, but we can reach you. Um, Russian propaganda, as he said, said that well, we shot it down. Mm, maybe it didn't. Russian propaganda said, um, well, it was an attack on the life of the president and they're running with that. And no, it wasn't. Okay. So he's saying it's probably, it, it's either Ukraine or it's the other, and he's going to give both sides. Let's go back to the Kremlin case. I promised to you to discuss two of the versions. By the way, this is the building itself. It's the Congress House of Russia, where Putin has his own apartments, but he rarely visits the place. Usually he stays outside the Moscow. But this place is famous for lots of the official cases. For example, in this hall, Putin greeted the new self-proclaimed republics to join the Russian Federation, not even taking the control over those parts of Ukraine. And the roof... That's quite a symbolic place to hit with the flag is just on the top it's like the ceiling of this hall so the first version is that ukraine is responsible for this one and yes i'll speculate about this one based on the information that we have so far as i showed you before there were numerous of the attacks on the russian federation territory last night so it could be also the part of that organized attack and it wasn't the attempt to eliminate the putin no but it was the successful mission to cause the russian reputation losses mm -hmm. because kremlin have never been under the air attacks since the world war ii and from what i was able to find on the internet even during the second world war there were no bombs dropped on the kremlin plus the russian federation haven't announced the attack on the Kremlin for a very long time. Today, after afternoon, they confirmed that after the information leaked into the press, the information from the CCTV cameras. Even though some of the Moscow citizens have reported this accident in their social media groups, the official government haven't reacted until everybody saw the videos. So indeed, the Russian government tried not to spread this information at first. 
Also, the plus for the Ukrainian responsibility goes uh, personally to President Zelensky because today he left Ukraine. He went to Finland where he yeah. met with other leaders of the northern countries. And tomorrow he's going to Netherlands. So Russia is unable to respond in the same way because the main guy, the leader, left the country for a while. So if Russia launches the rockets or the drones on the president's office in Kiev, they'll just uh, damage the building. That's it. it and so that's also an interesting point, And it makes it look like it was planned. And it was planned in such a way that Russia can't really retaliate in the way that they're saying that they want to retaliate. Uh, so it leans toward that theory. So the general idea why Ukraine might have conducted this strike is to show our allies that Russia doesn't care any longer about the red lines that they stated before. Remember how they say that the red line is to supply the Hymers to Ukraine, the red line is to supply the tanks for Ukraine, the red line is to attack Crimea, the red line, and now the line is just over here in Kremlin. It means that... And, and it seems to be a pretty compelling argument. Like, if Russia, if Ukraine can show that even this, nothing's going to happen, go ahead, provide us everything. And it looks like there is some compelling argument on this side of the equation that it could have been Ukraine. And as I say to you, the attack on the president's office in Kyiv will not bring any benefits for Russia. So as I see it, there are two ways for Russia. The first one is very stupid to use nukes. The second one is also stupid, but nevertheless, it could be they may declare the war officially against Ukraine and announce the massive mobilization of the Russian men. And both of those variants are terrible for yep, Putin's regime. But we have ideas. also the big minus in the version that Ukraine conducted this attack because officially President Zelensky declared that Ukraine is not responsible for this. And some of the Ukrainian politicians say that there is the Russian opposition or Russian elite that is against the Putin's regime. They've bought the drones to conduct this assault, let's say. Other than that, I don't see any kind of the minuses for the version that Ukraine conducted this attack. I know that we were preparing for some sort of the surprise for the Russian Federation on 9th of May. And you know probably that there was the competition announced by one of our bank directors with a price of half a million dollars for those designers who will design the drone that will go to the Red Square and probably they are trying to do it. So I would say that Ukraine has pursuit and inspiration to perform this kind of the strikes. All right. Okay. With that being said, I think he's onto something with uh, Zelensky uh, saying that denying it, becoming part of the reason why you would, might see the other side. So generally speaking, the Ukrainians, while the Russians lie about pretty much everything. The Ukrainians, when they either take credit for a strike or they stay silent for a about a strike, like they, they don't, then they haven't shown historically that they're going to uh, deny something that they actually did. And so that, that seems to be evidence for the other side, which he's about to get into. And now the version with the false flag operation. In that case, Putin wants to rise the stakes in that war to usage of the nukes or something like that. He wants to show to the Western countries that Ukraine conducted the attacks even on Kremlin without any negotiations with the partners. And just before the counterattack, it could be the sign for our allies do not support Ukraine with your weaponry. Otherwise, Russia may create the artificial situation in which they will respond using nukes. It doesn't mean that they will use them. They're still afraid to do it. Mm -hmm. But the idea now right. is to show the Western world that they are ready. And also this version has its own roots in the history Then Putin got the power. So right before elections, there were several buildings blown up inside the Russian Federation and in Moscow itself. And later on, the FSB agents were caught in Rizan by police. And those FSB agents had explosives with them. Later on, police freed those agents, saying that it was just the exercise. But clearly, that story showed that Putin, together with FSB, blown up the buildings in Russia just to increase the rating of Putin. It was done to show the Chechen people as their main enemy, the enemy of the Russian people. And after now, that's one of the strongest arguments for a f uh, false flag operation is that 
Putin's done it before, and what you do in the past is the strongest indicator of what you're going to do in the future. So what Putin did to start the war with the Chechens is a not out of character for him, and so he might do it again. So definitely, there is the variant that Russia may restart this false flag operation once again to show the Russian society their enemy as Ukrainians. And finally, announce the massive mobilization in their society, and in that way, they may secure the occupied territories in Ukraine. Okay, so that's Dennis's take on this. Let's go on and hear uh, a shorter version. This is uh, Mercado Media, and he just, you know, explains like, yeah, it's just this. What else had to happen? With respect to crossing red lines, etc., this was an attempt on the Supreme Commander. Global media is writing about this right now. This is exactly how they see it. No, it's not. No, it's not. No one's seeing it that way. Only state media like y'all, mm -hmm. people that are holding the ideology that are just uh, anti-West, they're saying that. But common sense folk and see that this is a false flag provocation. Okay, so he just said common sense folk think that this is a false flag provocation, and he's just laying it out just like that. And I think, you know, there's something to be said for that. Dennis just laid out the case. Here's Anna from Ukraine, and Anna, she has her take on this being a false flag leaning toward that position as well. And I've never seen uh, Anna happier in the last uh, month. Today I want to speak about news that are all over Russian media specifically and this is the so-called teract on Kremlin and uh, the desire to kill Russian President Vladimir Putin. So what actually happened? Honestly, I am not 100% sure that these are the actions of the Ukrainian armed forces and I will explain you why a little bit later. So honestly, uh, question number one, when you look at this uh, video, you realize that such small drones with so little explosion cannot actually lead to serious troubles and it does not seem it was likely they can kill a president. But they were talking everywhere. Another thing uh, that makes me think that still it is not a Ukrainian operation is how actively they discuss it everywhere and mm -hmm. I don't see any like uh, logical result of these actions that can bring us like anything. Uh, if it were a nuclear tactic bomb about Kremlin that maybe it would be more uh, interesting and dangerous for Putin. But here uh, we have this panic all around Russian society and maybe they try to distract the attention of uh, their population, I'm not going to call them society, of their population from the absence of huge celebrations, very traditional celebrations of the 9th of May, which is considered the victory day in Russia. And I think they've lost a lot of soldiers, they've lost a lot of weapons, tanks, and they don't have anything to show the people, to demonstrate the victories of Russian army. That's why this parade is totally unnecessary. Not many leaders will come. That's why they perhaps will use this news to say that it's super dangerous in Russia because like Kiev regime wants to kill President Putin. Okay, so that's Anna and she's on the side of that's a false flag and it's not necessarily the Ukrainians doing it. Here's one interesting um, video that I think will lend some credibility to that side of the equation. This is Suck O Mimus. I think I'm pronouncing that right. Somebody corrected me about that the other day. This is the take that uh, when they geolocate and try to see where things came from and try to look at the Google Maps, how they perceive this. In the bottom of Kremlin's domed roof at 2.30 in the morning. Here's where it hit. The dome roof of the Senate building. Now this is interesting. In the video footage we can see that the drone flies in from the east, possibly heading towards the northeastern direction slightly, as it possibly comes over the big shopping mall you can see. Well, certainly from an eastern direction, so not from the south as expected if this was Ukraine. This doesn't fully rule out Ukraine doing it, as these drones can manoeuvre of course to strike from other directions. But I don't think it makes much sense for Ukraine to divert around to this side and risk the chance of a drone getting spotted and intercepted by having to fly further. This points to it possibly being domestic sabotage. This is over 460 kilometers in a straight line to the nearest border point with Ukraine. 
So if this was Ukraine, these drones bypassed 460 kilometers of airspace, at least. And depending on the route taken, this would have passed areas where you'd expect a high SAM presence. Highlighted here are cities with airfields and air bases: Belgorod, Kursk, Bryansk, Kaluga, Voronezh. We'd expect to have some systems on high alert, not to mention the Panzers we've seen in Moscow itself, and these drones, if Ukrainian, got through them all. But I don't think it was Ukraine. I think a false flag or partisan activity is the most likely candidate here. So that's Sakomimus' is take on this, and they weren't even saying Ukraine or Russia's false flag. They were saying maybe partisans. Okay, so let's wrap up and try to get a sense of what are our options? So the first option is Ukraine did it. Okay, that makes sense. If Ukraine did it, they have symbolically shown that they can do it and they've backed up the army. But what are they actually getting out of it? As Sekomimus was saying, it, it could have been something more local. And that could break down into two forms. That could break down into uh, either local Russians that are partisans against Russia, or it could be Ukrainian special forces on the ground, or it could be something worse. It could be Russian insiders trying to take down Putin, and because they're local, they have the local knowledge, they're doing that. It could be UFOs. I don't know. I would rule that one out but it also could be a Russian false flag operation. Now, let's talk about the, the two leaders, right? If Ukraine did it, that's most likely. After all, they are at war with Russia. If we look at the idea of Occam's razor, Occam's razor is a principle or theory of construction or evaluation according to which all other things being equal, explanations that posit fewer entities Fewer kinds of entities are to be preferred over explanations that posit more. So the less complex solution is probably correct, is what Occam's razor is saying. The less complex solution is, well, who stands to benefit? Probably Ukraine. That would be the less complex solution. Another reason that it seems like Ukraine did it is that it forces Russia to back up to back up air defense, to back up jets, to back up all kinds of things, because now they're on notice that Ukraine has the ability to hit them. It's also an excellent preparation to the counteroffensive if you cause them to back up. It's demoralizing to Russia just before Victory Day to have this kind of, of strike on the, the heart of Russian territory. Now think about this. Um, on 9-11, I felt it. I mean, I really felt it just when the Twin Towers were hit, when the Pentagon was hit. Um, the 9-11 um, hijackers were going to try to hit the Capitol building or the White House or perhaps both. And it just didn't work out the way that they were going to. But, whoa, you would really feel that. And so there's something there for demoralization. But the really interesting thing is that Zelensky denied it. And generally speaking, the Ukrainians either took credit or were quiet after a strike. And so, uh, and, and Mercado Media pulls this out, and good on Mercado Media Ski for showing this. visiting and entering, and here he is making statements in a uh, press conference when he was talking. Ukraine did not attack Kremlin, Zelensky says, as Nordic's pledge continued support. So check this out. This moment. <laughs> uh... You know, I, I can repeat, repeat this message, and I think it will at least will be understandable for, for everybody. We don't attack Putin or Moscow. Uh, we fight on, on our territory. We are defending our villages and cities. We don't have, you know, enough weapons for this. That's why we don't use it any, anywhere for, for us. That is the deficit. We, we can't spend it. And we didn't attack Putin. We leave it to tribunal. Okay. Now, there's also the possibility that it was a false flag operation. And here are the, the reasons that it might be a false flag operation. Um, First, they can claim that there was an assassination attempt. It was clearly not an assassination attempt on Putin's life. I mean, there was there was nothing anywhere near the firepower that would require or that would be necessary for that. Putin doesn't stay there at night, so this would be kind of stupid. But second, it would generate some significant patriotic sentiment within Russia. And if that's what you're trying to do, if you could claim that there was an assassination attempt, if you could show that you're under attack, you can rally the people together 
under that banner. Uh, it also allows Putin to escalate, and this is a really interesting point. It allows Putin to escalate in a way that he otherwise can't. He's, he's been crying wolf about nuclear for so long that he really has very few cards to play. He's used his missiles to attack the civilian population rather than the military in Ukraine, and, and he hasn't been able to get any more ground or getting gain any more traction than he has. So what, he's, what does he have left? Nuclear, but he's cried wolf about that again and again and again. But this is different. This provides him a different card. So that might be what's going on. Um, there's also an excuse to target get Ukrainian civilians in a terrorist campaign as retribution so they can do this more to do the terrorism that they were doing before but less before it looked like terrorism now it looks like just retribution for trying to assassinate the president so there's that it's also an excuse to prevent the victory day parade and I talked about this yesterday go back one video uh, the victory day parade they already were going to cancel it because they don't want people in the procession to be you know the procession where they're carrying the face of somebody who died in World War II. They don't want it to be filled with people who died in Ukraine. And they're worried about some kind of mm, popular uprising that it could go wrong. Um, I don't think that there's going to be a popular rising, uprising, but you know what happened to Ceausescu uh, years ago, it could happen here. And Putin is paranoid about color revolutions. And then finally, um, there's a false flag because they're demonstrating how strong they are by defeating this you know, this threat that came to us, this tiny little threat that hit the building, we're going to go defeat that. And, and the, the massive retribution is going to allow them to try to demonstrate how tough they are. Okay, those are a menu of options. I have a particular proclivity toward this. I believe that one thing is stronger than another, but I'm not going to say what I believe because I don't quite have enough evidence to show you, but that's the menu. So it could be uh, that Ukraine did it. It could be that local Russians or Ukrainians on the ground did it. It could be that Russian insiders are trying to take down Putin. It could be that Russia is involved in a false flag operation and the leading candidates are Ukraine or false flag, but we just don't know. At any rate, that's what UA tubers on YouTube have been saying about the drone strike. I hope that's helpful. Thank you for watching this video all the way to the end. If you watch it all the way to the end, can you just leave me a comment and tell me what you think? And uh, thank you for being the kind of person that cares about Ukraine.